Carson meant what to you? Well, uh, for a person in that situation, he meant everything. Uh, I mean, it was, uh, it wasn't like it is now. The, the door to being a stand-up comedy or television success was the Tonight Show, the curtains through which you pass to be on the Tonight Show. And he meant everything to me. He meant everything to everybody else who was out there doing stand-up. Uh, it was the, the time when you could be on that show, do well on the Tonight Show. The next day, you would get calls about having your own show. You would get calls yes. about uh, auditioning. William Morris wanted you, and, and they're going to put you on a show, and then there's a movie and a this and somebody. And in those days, people would go out on tour for like six, eight months, and they'd have an opening act. So it was really the employment placement office. And more often than not, if, if Johnny liked you, uh, you were going to trend upward on a, on a pretty steep end. The most powerful influence on your life, you think? For, for, first for that reason, and yeah. second because yeah. he was the gold standard. Mm -hmm. Yes, the most powerful influence, certainly professionally. And, and I used to think as, as a kid watching him uh, in, in the Midwest, in Indianapolis, and, and uh, you know, my dad would be there in his underwear, and, and I'd be there in my pajamas, and we'd be watching Johnny Carson, and uh, Johnny was like, oh, geez, uh, you know, I love my dad, but Johnny's a little hipper than my dad. Uh, <laughs> and so Johnny kind of became a guy, you know? Yeah. This is what you do if you're a guy. When's the last time you saw him alive? Uh, it was... Uh, Years and go, years ago, uh, he and his wife were in town on their on their boat, uh, and they invited me and my wife to have dinner with them. And we sailed up and down the Hudson. We went under the uh, George Washington Bridge, turned around, came up, back uh, past the lower, uh, looked right at the Statue of Liberty, and then up the East River, turned around, and came back. And it was all at sunset, and it was magical. He walked away from it. Could you walk away from it? Yeah, yeah. Think so? Yeah, yeah I, th I think he, I think you would always... I, oh, I know Johnny missed it because uh, like six months after he retired, somebody had a big party for him in New York and he'd won some sort of an award and people got up and uh, did material and I had to get up and do material and that damn Ted Koppel was there. <laughs> uh, and then Johnny got up. Uh, and, and Johnny, who had not been on television for six months or a year... Bang, 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 right down like he'd had not missed a beat, uh, stuff out of the newspaper, bang, 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 bang. And at some point during that, he says, uh, he said, I'm so glad uh, this is going well. He says, I sure do miss it. So I know he missed it, and I, I know I would miss it, but I'd find uh, other things to do. Uh, there have been other dramatic events in your life. One is you go to the hospital and they tell you you're going to be in the operating room. Mm-hmm. You go in, the same doctor I had. Does it change your attitude about work? Does it change your attitude about mortality? Does it, it change, didn't change my attitude about mortality, but it did change my attitude about work because uh, from the minute they pulled the uh, the tube out, the intubator or whatever they call it. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, I thought, geez, I wonder if I can still work again. Uh, so it, it, uh, it, it in a movie, it would be where... Uh, the prize fighter who gets knocked down, it would be the montage where he then tries to get back in shape to get another shot at the title. So I was worried that I wouldn't be able to work again. So uh, it, it kind of relit the fuse of, well, let me see if I can do this. Uh, and that's, you know, that's why you leave Indianapolis in a pickup truck, because you want to see if you can do it. <laughs> yes. so, so now, yes. oh, geez, I want to see if I can still do this. And you did, but there are stories that, that you became... Mellow, more charming. <laughs> <laughs> that you that you weren't quite, you know, as you had been. Uh, I mean, a guy whose life, entire life, was this show, right? Because it had defined well, I, what you loved doing. You yeah. wanted to do it better, and you didn't know what there would be if it wasn't there. Yeah. Well, irrespective of what I just said. Uh, one of the things, uh, a regret I have, I don't know if it could have been any other way, but a regret I have was not being so single-minded about this show. Uh, and, I, and I think what it is, in, in my case, the two great motivators in my life, uh, and I hate it when people start talking about 
two great motivators in my life. Uh, one is the, the uh, guilt. I'm really haunted by guilt. Um, actual guilt, made up guilt, you know. And the, the other would be the fear of failure. Because if, if I don't succeed, me loading the pickup truck in Indianapolis in 1975 looks pretty silly. Yes. So, so success defined that as the right thing to do. Yeah, but I, I wish I had, uh, I think it came at a price. I, I mean, the, the heart surgery being one of them. But I, I wish I hadn't been so gosh darn single-minded because it, it, uh, when, when your focus is that tight, uh, you miss a lot of what's going on around you. CBS came to you and Howard Stringer uh, after they decided to go with Jay for The Tonight Show. Um, can you look at that now and say that was for the best? Uh, yes, absolutely for the best. And, and when, I, when I look at that now, I think it also uh, reminds me of some of the worst uh, behavior of my life, my own behavior. Uh, and I wish things were like they are now. I wish they were like they are now then. And what was the worst behavior? Well, there was a lot of pressure, a lot of self-imposed pressure, a lot of actual pressure. I mean, they came in and remodeled this place, uh, which I've grown to love dearly, huge amounts of money. We had to fly around the country, to talk to skeptical uh, affiliates, and uh, I, I didn't handle it well. Uh, and I wish I were able to handle it the way I handle things now. But it was insecurity, anger? In insecurity, anger, fear of failure, uh, e e everything. All that's gone now. I would say it's all gone, but it's, it's in, in, in a manageable dose. I, I, I just feel like this is the way humans really ought to be. I, I mean, I still lose my temper. Uh, and you're this close, Charlie. I'm telling That's you, right. you are this close. <laughs> Let me you know, know when I get mean? even I will closer. Mop the floor with you. <laughs> That'll make this one of the more interesting <laughs> interviews I've ever done, right there. So, what is it you think that you brought? Uh, you created this show, which followed um, a previous show, where you had sort of, in the eyes of many, redefined comedy, because it couldn't be what John was doing. Right. It had to be something else. Yeah. You didn't want to have his guest on your show. Well, we couldn't. We were we were told as a prohibition, you can't do this. You can't have the same guest. You can't have an orchestra. Right. And on and on and on. Uh, but you know, I had very little to do with that. It was the the people that uh, on the sh on the staff. Well, they were resourceful enough and figured out ways. You know, they kind of said, "Good, that's not the show we want to do anyway." Right. And and I always felt like I was lucky enough to do somebody else's show. You know, they built the show and I did it. And, it, you know, when we started out, the, the producer and the head writer and uh, was was Meryl Marker, right. and so we kind of did her show. And then after that, we did uh, uh, Steve O'Donnell's show, who was another head writer, and then Rob Burnett was our head writer for a long time when we did his show. Uh, and I liked the fact that these people were all smarter and funnier than I was because... You know, I don't. I don't. Is this know just self-deprecation, or you actually believe that? I, I, I think it's true. They were doing their Absolutely. show rather than your show. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, and it, and it's a, it's a great relief because you then learn from them while they're doing it, and then you can compliment what they're doing, or uh, personalize it to make yourself fit in. But well, here's the interesting thing, and this is you know this whole notion of the Kennedy Honors is recognizing something about your contribution. What Johnny Carson meant to you, you mean to Jimmy Kimmel and others. And do you have any sense of that? I mean, do you well, appreciate that? You know, that? Jimmy Kimmel is a case, and he's been very nice to me. He's a, a nice kid and been very gracious to me. And uh, to the point where it's made me self-conscious. And I start thinking about what this is and yeah. the comparison that he had made that uh, you are to me what Carson right. was to you. And the difference is, uh, all I really have is tenure. Uh, Carson was head and shoulders beyond anybody doing it now, anybody who will, who will ever do it. You may see flashes of what he could do, but if you look at his show, it was always effortless. Even, even shows that were awful, yeah. you just wanted to see what Johnny was doing. I, I don't have that. Like I said, all I have is uh, time. Tenure. I put, in, I put in my time. I don't. Oh, I it's can't more than that, much. Dave. I, mean, you, I, I don't, I don't you, know. I mean, I'm not one to argue about this because I don't understand comedy. But at the same time, you know, it's self-evident that what after you, people looked at these shows differently. 
and therefore right. Fallon like I, and like Kimmel I said, and I, I, I believe that may be true. More than tenure, though, there was something no, about I, the the eccentricity of whatever it was. I think it was the vision of the people that I had around me more than yeah. me. I mean, we all knew that the charge was to be a different show, uh, and in the beginning. I will admit that I thought I had all the answers for television, and I, you, you had that attitude. Watch out, world. Exactly. I'm coming. Or if you can wait just a little longer, we'll take care of television. <laughs> That's right. And then we'll do it. Yeah, pretty, we have. We know the answer. We soon, have the secret. You realize you don't know the answer. So, <laughs> the sauce is not there every night. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know if I can rightly. You know, I was in the room. I'll give yeah. you that. I was in the room. Yeah. You cannot understand unless you sit in that chair how you feel the necessity of getting a laugh mm -hmm. every minute. Right. Well, I, that's interesting. I remember when we said that. See, I don't feel that way anymore. Uh, I always felt like the, the, the show, I was the, the central nervous system of the show. Yeah. Uh, we have, while my name is in the title of the show, I don't feel that need now. I, I feel like the presence of the guest uh, can can handle that just fine. Um, somebody else can get a laugh, or we can go without a laugh. Now, I would prefer a laugh comes from someplace, but I, but I don't feel that ultimately the, that weight is on my shoulders. Anymore. Is what makes you laugh different today? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, no, I think what makes me laugh today is the same thing that's always made me laugh. Something uh, silly, really silly, but yet still within the range of plausibility. Yeah. Something that, yeah, that maybe could happen. We don't think so, but maybe it could happen. But it's so very silly. And, that, and that's all it takes. You love somebody pushes back, though. I mean, you, yeah, yeah. these smart people come in here and that's they right. push back. That's right. You know, if yeah, they that's, have, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But it's also the fact that they come prepared. Mm -hmm. I mean, you like the guy. I mean, I flew back across the country with Tom Hanks one day, and he was going to be on the show. He was thinking about appearing with you for five minutes, mm -hmm. preoccupied with it, yeah, because he wanted it to be perfect. Right. Well, he's he's a tremendous guy, and he for him to take my show that seriously, uh, that's high praise. Yeah. And finally, I and mean, there's a sense that for a while you were a loner. A loner. A loner. <laughs> <laughs> a drifter. <laughs> A man wanted in several states. That's right. A man, a, a man who would get in his Porsche and drive up there yeah. at speeds beyond yeah. light. Yeah. Uh, but a also psychopath. A, a man who had multiple a personalities. With, a man who had an obsession with owning lots of land in yeah. Montana sure. and St. Yeah. Bards and everywhere else. Collecting jars of his own urine. <laughs> Well, thank you. Honestly, I, I'm so uh, grateful. And I just want to say, uh, in, in the beginning when we came here, I was uh, really difficult for the network. I regret that behavior. And over the years, uh, people like yourself and the management have been nothing uh, but kind to me. And I appreciate that. Because we love you. Oh. <laughs>